Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Uh, the purpose of this video is really to share with you some decisions that I have made. Uh, the whole thing got kind of started with uh, this video I did about Bye Bye Bias on how I was going to not use bias frames, uh, use flats and dark flats. And then uh, through that process, I learned that uh, because of the AS ASI 294, uh, not only do I want to do flat and dark flats, but I want to make sure that those flat and dark flats have a minimum exposure of three seconds. Um, so that uh, led me to do some work to see how I could optimize how long it takes to do a minimum three second exposure for each of the filters that I have um, using uh, nighttime imaging and astronomy, which is referred to as Nina, and that is the control software that I use. I also, as part of my process of taking flats, I have a Pegasus Astro 150 uh, flat master LED panel that I am able to attach uh, into uh, the Nina uh, control software. And um, uh, Nina then has a facility called uh, Flat Wizard uh, that lets you uh, automate the routine of, of taking the flats. And uh, on a per filter basis, there are several uh, parameters that you can set as part of the process of taking the flat. And you'll see what is um, uh, common to uh, all the filters here is that I've set it as a minimum of three seconds. So um, what this uh, spreadsheet is that I'll put a link in the uh, description. Um, it, uh, it, it shows me how long it's going to take for me to do uh, my flat and dark flat or flat dark frames uh, per uh, time that I want to take them. And so I've made several decisions here. I've decided that every night of imaging I am going to take a flat and flat darks. Uh, I've decided that I am going to take 10 exposures for each filter. If I find out later on that I am not taking enough flat and um, flat dark per filter, uh, I'm open-minded then I'll change it. Uh, but for right now, this is my baseline, 10 per filter for uh, per frame type. So flat and then 10 for uh, dark flat. And so laying it out in this manner, what it allowed me to see is that it's really not going to be that big of a time investment. Uh, with the automation of uh, Nina uh, through the flat wizard, through the uh, use of the Pegasus Astro Flatmaster 150 uh, flat panel. Um, it's a relatively quick process. Now, of course, there's 15 uh, minutes here for the Luminous and the uh, Broadband Red, Green, and Blue. Uh, does not include the time it takes to go into Nina uh, to start um, the flat wizard process, put your flat panel on, um, and those type of activities. So I'm going to round this up that it's probably going to take me probably when it comes to luminous and the broadband filters, uh, maybe, um, you know, 30 minutes at the most at the end of the night. I'm going to make that commitment and see, uh, uh, see what kind of results I'm getting um, when these calibrations uh, frames are applied to the uh, uh, image processing side of the work. Uh, down here... <clears throat> and again, on the uh, for these broadband filters, I can just lay the Astro uh, Pegasus Astro Flatmaster 150 right on top of the end of the tube. I don't need any diffusion layer. I don't need like a T-shirt. I don't need um, I don't need any uh, diffusion pieces of paper. And for the record, at one time I just did use my Samsung uh, tablet. Uh, with an app that was available on uh, the Google Play Store. And uh, that's how I did my uh, flats initially. But I, I will say, while it cost me a couple of hundred bucks for the flat master, uh, I do appreciate the convenience and I do think it's uh, it's adding in, uh, in value. Um, 
Now, when it comes to doing the uh, narrow band filters, I needed to add some diffusion, and I'll put a picture in. I basically had a pair of white uh, um, boxer athletic shorts, uh, and I was able to double it over and create enough diffusion uh, to uh, be able to bring uh, the ex resulting exposures in the range that I was looking for. And again, the key thing was no exposure uh, less than three seconds. Uh, so you'll see here with the Oxygen 3, it's a, a 3.1 second uh, exposure. So now doing a narrow band, it's going to take me a little longer each night. So I think 35 minutes here. So I'm going to say, okay, I need to allow an hour at the end of the night uh, to get this work done. And um, uh, that's just what I am going to do. All these um, uh, values here uh, were taken from uh, the values here that we used to generate uh, each exposure. And uh, based on some of the feedback I got, thank you. I always appreciate the feedback. Uh, I uh, set all the parameters to keep the ADU uh, below 3200. Uh, so here's all the ADU values. Here's the exposure uh, per, uh, you know, the seconds per exposure uh, per filter. So I think everything's looking pretty good here. Again, Maybe 10 is not the right number, but that's what I'm going to start with. And then I will, uh, I'll adjust accordingly. So uh, the other great thing is that this gives me guidance now when I'm planning a night of imaging. And I'm going to do a video because I am planning my trip down to uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station. And then I'm going over for a few nights to Borrego Springs, which is another uh, dark site area. Um, so I'm, I'm planning that, uh, now, and what this is showing me here is that I probably want to set up my imaging. So during a night I'm doing broadband or I'm doing narrow band and I probably don't want to mix the two because if I'm going to take flat and flat darks at the end of night, um, I, I kind of want to contain contain that. So my targets are going to be based uh, per night on either a narrow band or a, a broadband type target. So uh, me doing this work kind of gave me some guidance for how I am going to approach it, how you may approach it uh, may be different. I did think about not doing them every night <clears throat> in that when I go to the dark side, I can set up my equipment and it stays set up over multiple days. Uh, because I can, I can leave it out. I got a cover for it, um, uh, to protect it from the elements and all that. Uh, but I've decided to do it every night to invest the time. Uh, but again, limit it to 10 frames for flat per filter, 10 frames for uh, flat dark per filter, and then see what I'm getting as far as results. So I just wanted to tie everything together. I am, uh, because of the characteristics of the ASI 294MM, uh, where the sensor needs a few seconds to stabilize, uh, and given that bias frames are zero second, uh, those two don't uh, work well together. So I'm eliminating the bias frames. I'm going with the flat and flat darks, um, ensuring that the minimum exposure is three seconds as recommended by what was shared on cloudy nights. And I'm going to do these frames uh, every night uh, when it comes to the flat and uh, flat darks. Uh, and I'm going to do 10 uh, per filter for each type, flat and flat dark. So at least in my mind, I'm very settled. I can move forward with confidence. I may be way off base. You know, I'll find that as I'm collecting data. And the one thing that if you're, as a beginner, in my mind, uh, the ability to collect good data uh, lets you uh, some leeway in reprocessing it. So um, we'll see how this works out as a starting point. Now, uh, just real quickly, uh, we had a power outage last night here. I said, hey, what a great time. It was nighttime. Uh, I set everything up. It was really pitch black. 
in here. Uh, as you know, I use Jackeries to power my equipment. So I just went ahead and uh, built my dark libraries. Uh, I built uh, for both five, uh, minus 5C and minus 10C for both 240 second and 300 second exposures. Um, I believe I did 40 uh, frames um, per uh, temperature type and, exp and uh, exposure seconds. So now I've got a good dark library that I can use consistently over the next couple of months. Uh, and then there'll come a time when I rebuild that dark library. And I figure I'm not going to cool my uh, ASI 294MM really below minus 10 degrees C. So again, that's another decision point I made uh, going forward. So, okay. Um, other than that, you know, give me your feedback or suggestions or questions if you have them. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up as always. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Um, you know, I'm fully committed to trying to optimize uh, my approach to calibration frames. And, and this is basically the baseline that I've established. And I'm going to go forward from here. And I keep an open mind as a beginner. And I'll make adjustments as results indicate those adjustments should be made. So other than that, I uh, hope you have clear skies wherever you may be in the world. Till next time.